this beautiful bird that we're looking at here on the screen is called a Jacobin, a Jacobin pigeon. Uh, these are really, really ancient uh, breed of pigeon. They were made tens of thousands of years ago by the um, by the Tibetan monks, uh, um, a, a variety of the Tibetan monks called the Jacobin monks. And they were so proud of their bird that they created that they named them after themselves, which is kind of a cool thing to do. I think if I made a bird, I'd probably name it after myself. Um, they're my favorite pigeon. Uh, undoubtedly, they are just exquisite in their beauty and the arrangement of their feathers. Um, this is a bird that I had to rear. Um, he is just three months old. Uh, so he's only just a young bird, a uh, young male bird. Uh, you can hear the male uh, characteristic sounds they're beginning to develop. Uh, he's just beginning to develop a proper headgear. He looks a little bit kind of scattered there at the minute. Um, with the feather arrangement. But trust me, in a couple of weeks time, this bird is going to be immaculate. Really, really proud of this guy. Love that arrangement of color the black and the green, uh, the headgear, the elongated tail. Um, so yeah, just a spectacular bird. But not without their problems, uh, anyway, any of you that are familiar with the Jacobin will know that the Jacobin parents themselves are, they were not vested with good parenting skills um, in that their beak is too short. Uh, as we know, pigeons feed their uh, babies um, uh, orally through, through, through the mouth and if you just look at the head of this Jacobin as I said he's fully grown even though he's only three months old the head and particularly the beak is very very small so effectively the young are not able to get their um, their heads down sufficiently inside the mouth for the parent to feed them the pigeon milk which is why we have this problem uh, normally what I do is I always have a backup of something reliable like a tumbler which is a really good parent and will surrogate and foster and rear successfully. Uh, this is the first week in September and I had two unexpected Jacobin eggs uh, from the same same parents as this boy actually. Uh, and uh, unfortunately I just didn't have a surrogate to rear them. Uh, which is a big problem so I am doing very similar to what I had to do with this guy uh, in that I'm going to have to tube them and rear them myself um, sounds like a big ordeal it's not really it just involves a little bit of skill and knowing what you're doing uh, it involves a little bit of patience um, and there's great rewards from it as well in that you get a pigeon that is easy to handle um, still maintains its own integrity as a bird um, and it's nice to be able to contribute uh, towards the survival of the species um, in these um, in this layman's way now what I'm using here is an, ar an artificial heat source uh, because the chicks are only, uh, the oldest guy here is just a week old and the second guy is only just a couple of days old. So what I'm going to feed them with, here I have a, uh, a product made up um, earlier, one I prepared earlier. Uh, all of this is, all this is effectively is uh, some uh, egg yolk, uh, softly boiled. I have some milk product, um, I have little bits of wheat, a wheat flake, and I have some flaxseed, uh, what else did I add to that? That was it, actually, that was it at the moment, um, and it's all blended up into a very, very watery as, um, uh, consistency, and I'm going to tube feed both the boards. Now here I have two syringes. Um, filled with the liquid and I'm just have it I'm just bringing it up to body temperature here in uh, just some uh, tepid water you don't want to have it too hot either because you don't want to send their systems into shock certainly not to have it too cold because they're not able to tolerate that uh, so just bringing it up to um, uh, room temperature is what I call it uh, most important thing is always to use your glove when you're dealing with delicate birds like this um, 
And here, looking up at me, there, look at Coco, she's looking up at me, she said, what's this fella doing? Never mind. Uh, okay, let's have a look and we'll see how this goes with these two. Um, I used this disused uh, cage that I have here, which is really handy, because it can swing under the artificial light, which you see here. So that they are always getting an, an even uniform um, heat source. So there we have our two little jackpins. This little one here is going to be a replica of his older sibling. Uh, the other one is going to be a mottled, I think. Uh, oh, she, yeah, she's really hungry. Oh, look at that already. She's just jumping up. Come on. Are you hungry? Mm -hmm. I'm kind of, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to set this camera down and I hope that you will be able to see this clearly. And I will, I will move, is that clear? I hope so. I will move the boards around so that you're able to see better what I am doing. Um, so, as I said, I have a small tubing on the end of this, so what we want to do, and this, uh, I suppose look, the most important thing is that you, have, you have to be careful when you're doing this because you really need to know what you're doing. Uh, I use a little bit of extended tubing to get it down over uh, over the tongue and that it follows straight on into the, into the tummy, into the, there we go, there we go. And the most important thing with them is not to uh, not to saturate their gullets uh, with food. Oh, there are my diamond doves cooing away here at me in the background. And uh, come on, a big guy. See how you get on. So never in never inject the product until you know that they're ready to start swallowing. This guy now is much stronger. It's much hardier. It's amazing the difference a couple of days makes. And he's, he's swallowing that really, really good. And here we have big brother standing down over me, watching my every move. Yeah, you can't get any of this now because you're fully reared and you're able to eat on your own. Get a small little bit again. I hope that's clear on the camera there because I'm conscious that I am working at a really awkward angle. Uh, it should be. It should be. Um, the Jacobin are far too uh, precious a bird not to preserve. So these little measures where as though they might look time consuming. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Thank you. Yes, I know. You're wondering what all this activity is, aren't you? Okay, a little bit more. <laughs> Actually, it's really funny. The big guy, even though he's fully reared, is still looking for his feet. I'm trying to wear the, wean, the, wean them, wean them off the off the feeding is can be a little bit difficult. Um, I mean, the big guy still follows me around during the day um, expecting me to feed him here even though he's well able to he's well able to forage himself he's well able to look after himself at this stage a um, little bit more for this young one so as I said just make sure that the tube is always down now my fingers are really blocking your sense of view and you can see the bird just swallowing away the product there himself okay Let's have a look now and we see what they're getting on with that. The most important thing is not to overfeed them, so just small little amounts regularly uh, throughout the day. And you're always just checking the uh, food sack to make sure that it has landed where it's meant to be. You have to be careful, of course, that it doesn't go into their lungs. So a little bit of precision and knowing what you're doing is important there. Um, and we just check their bed for the night. Now this is not an ideal cage for pigeons, but it is an ideal uh, 
kind of a brooder facility in that it keeps them warm, it keeps them safe. Um, it creates a kind of a nest-like situation and there. There's like a little bit of a hollow in here. Um, so they are very safe in it and, and I love to use uh, something like this uh, for newborn babies because they are very, in fact, it's effectively caught. In the bottom, you know what I mean? Okay, let's have a look. We bridge you back in for the night. Okay. There's number one. Yeah, he's going to be a lovely bird, actually, this little fella. He's going to be very dark. Uh, you'll see the changes in him. And number two. I never put the heat directly over them because they're so small and they're so fat and plump. They would just uh, suffocate with the heat. So you always have the heat at a kind of a, an obscure angle. Hey, madam, stop. Uh, you always have it at an angle that's a, kind of adjacent to them, but not directly over them. And they're still able to, um, they're still able to sustain their own body temperatures with that. So there we go. That's a, a kind of a very rough example of how you tube feed um, any kind of a board, but particularly a board like this, that's kind of really unique in my opinion. Uh, and if you want something like that in a couple of weeks time, uh, we have to start off with small, small, slow steps. So fingers crossed, it all goes well. So the small brief upload there on how to tube feed a pigeon uh, the most important thing is know what you're doing, a little bit of caution, a little bit of patience, and research it first of all before you even attempt. Okay.